Welcome to Elite Insights, where we try to make sense of this crazy world we live in from a wealth creation and wealth protection perspective. As the trolls like to remind me, I'm very old, and I've been around the block many times. But I really can't recall a time when it's been harder to read the runes of what's going on in the markets. I read widely to keep myself informed, but it's hard to know which experts to believe when it's clear that markets have been manipulated by governments and central banks for over a decade now. One of the professional cynics who I find a pleasure to read is the billionaire head of Agora Publishing, Bill Bonner. In a recent Money Week column, he made a point that helps to explain just how weird markets have become and how we need to find a, a benchmark that we can cling to. Stock market investors think that they've experienced a, a bull market during the last decade, and in dollar terms, they're right. But what if you measure, say, the Dow Jones Index in terms of ounces of gold? At the turn of the millennium, you would need 40 ounces of gold to buy the Dow Jones 30. By the start of 2011, you'd only need 8 ounces of gold to buy the same index. That's an 80% fall. OK, you might say, we'd only just come out of the financial crisis at that time, so that's not a fair comparison. But even at its recent highs, the Dow 30 has only recovered to a level of 22 ounces of gold, about half where it was in the year 2000. Bill describes this as a typical bear market bounce, and not the raging bull market that most investors think they've experienced. So measured in gold, the US stock market is 50% down in the last 20 years. I've often upset property investors by applying a similar measure to the real estate market. When you look at the value of your home or your buy-to-let portfolio in sterling, you think you've done really well in the last 20 or 30 years. Now compare those two price points in ounces of gold and you'll get the real truth. Please don't shoot the messenger. Gold has its faults and its critics, but we need to recognize it as one of the few sources of truth in a world that's gone fiscally crazy. Negative bond yields, loss-making companies with multi-billion dollar valuations, interest rates cut again, trillion dollar annual deficits in America, $250 trillion of global debt. Prices may rise in fiat currencies like the pound and the dollar, but that's merely a reflection of the reducing purchasing power of those paper currencies. Make sure you structure your portfolio with some bedrock assets that will benefit from these loose money policies and maintain your purchasing power despite the best attempts of politicians and central bankers to inflate away your wealth so they can pay off their debts. If you're sitting with six or seven figure sums in the bank, be very afraid. As someone I know well used to say, be very careful out there. I'll see you next time.